Molecular geometry. When atoms combine, they take on certain shapes. Uh, these shapes that they're going to take on are going to allow pairs of valence electrons to arrange themselves as far away from each other as possible. The shape of a molecule affects its physical properties, such as boiling point and melting point. The Vesper theory, the valence shell electron pair repulsion, works <coughs> Excuse me. The Vesper theory, the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, works with small molecules where the valence electrons repel. Uh, the valence electron pairs repel because of the electrons negatively charged. They're going to want to occupy as much space as possible. To maximize the distance between atoms that are bonded to a central atom, small molecules assume five common shapes. And we're going to be using this sheet to help us identify the molecular shape. Um, you're going to be given this. You're not going to have to remember it. You're not going to have to recall it from memory, but you will have to be able to read it. The first molecular shape is linear. Here, these molecules are in a straight line, and the bond angle is 180 degrees. Bent is when there are two bonded and two non-bonded pairs around the central atom. The bond angle is near 105 degrees. If there's three bonded pairs around the central atom, we call this trigonal planar. It's flat with a bond angle of 120 degrees. Four bonds around the central atom is tetrahedral with a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. Pyramidal, here we have three bonded and one non-bonded pair around the central atom with a bond angle of 107 degrees. So, let's practice a little bit. Carbon tetrachloride. Well, in order to do the molecular geometry, we're going to have to draw the Lewis structure. So, so carbon's in the middle, four valence electrons, chlorine on the outside with seven valence electrons each, So we have a shared bond here, shared bond here, shared bond here, shared bond here. So if we take a look on the central atom, we have four total electron pairs. When we look back at our molecular shape sheet, we see four total pairs of electrons. Now, in carbon tetrachloride, in carbon tetrachloride, all four were shared. So when we look when we look back at our sheet, our four total pairs tells us that carbon tetrachloride is tetrahedral and has a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. Our next example is dihydrogen monosulfide. So dihydrogen tells us that we have two hydrogens. Monosulfide says that we have one sulfur. So we have a shared pair here and a shared pair here. Now, we still have four total pairs of electrons. If you look, we have one, two, three, four total pairs. But now in that four total pairs, we only have two shared and two unshared. So going back to our going back to our molecular shape sheet, in our molecular shape sheet, 
Our options for four total pairs are down here. When we go to our next column, shared pairs, here's our two shared pairs and two unshared pairs. So our molecule here is bent with a bond angle of 104.5 degrees. Nitrogen trifluoride. Here we have nitrogen with five valence electrons and fluoride, trifluoride, means that we have three. I'm just going to use these solid lines to represent other electron pairs. So there's our seven valence electrons. We share electrons here. So now again we have four total pairs. We have one, two, three shared pairs. So three of them are shared. And we have this and we have this pair and we have this pair of electrons that is unshared. So we look back at our molecular shape sheet and again four total pairs but now we have three shared pairs and one unshared pair so this is pyramidal with a bond angle of 107.3. Our last example is carbon dioxide. In carbon dioxide we have carbon with our four electrons and two oxygens with six valence electrons. So carbon will bond here, we'll bond here, we'll bond here, and we'll bond here. Now carbon dioxide is a little tricky because we have oxygen double bonded to carbon double bonded to oxygen. <clears throat> so when we look, we should we So when we look, we might think that there are four total pairs. We might think that there are four shared pairs and no lone pairs and consider carbon dioxide to be tetrahedral, but that's not the case. Tetrahedral has one, two, three, four, and five total atoms. Carbon dioxide doesn't have five total atoms. Carbon dioxide only has three total atoms. So when we look, so when we look, a bent molecule has three atoms and a linear model molecule has three atoms. Again, we might be tempted to pick bent because of the four total pairs of electrons. But what we need to consider is that when we have a double bond like we have in carbon dioxide, we think of this as a single unit because those double bonds are going to behave as a single unit. So that means that when we look back here, we should pick linear as our molecular shape with a bond angle of 180 degrees. Carbon dioxide is going to be the tricky one and it'll make a little bit more sense once we get into our building molecular molecules activity, which we'll do a little bit later.